So it occurred to me the other day that I could actually use the motor dyno to measure the cogging torque. That's the stiff clicking that you feel when you spin a motor bell just by hand. So I thought it would be interesting to just look at a couple of different motors and see just how big uh, this cogging torque is. And if we can see if it really, you know, how big of a deal is it uh, that a motor has a stiff cogging torque versus one that has very little. So to look at this, I just put the motor on the dyno and very gently by hand turn the spindle of the dyno. So as I'm spinning the spindle, the cogging torque is gently pushing against the torque arm until it clicks over to the next stop and then the torque falls away. The motors that I have are just a couple different samples. They're all uh, 1106s. I have uh, an 1106 Sunny Sky, uh, the Brother Hobby, uh, Rotor X, uh, 1105B, and an Emax motor. Uh, both the Sunny Sky and the Brother Javi have really stiff feeling clicks. Uh, the Emax less so, and the uh, Rotor X feels really smooth. And so the results of that quick uh, check are what we're looking at here. These uh, graphs are all the torque uh, measured by the torque arm. And we can't directly relate the peaks to each other because, as you can see, the baseline levels here are uh, slightly different because it didn't zero out um, right over the, the beginning. But what I wanna look at is the difference between kind of the lowest point of the click and the highest point of the click. So you can kind of see on this one, you know, it drops down, uh, you know, the force increases and increases and increases. And then we click over to the next magnet and then it drops back down to a uh, low value until we start pushing against the next magnet again. And then it rises once more. On this yellow trace, the sunny sky, I have large negative spikes uh, that came out the bottom. I think that that is uh, from the torque arm uh, ringing as I hit this, because this is a fairly uh, high value there. And so I'm, I'm inclined to discount that as the baseline value, um, because what looks like we've got that, that little ring there at the beginning, um, but then it does feel like it stabilizes a little bit, just like this orange trace did where we you know fall off, stabilize, and then rise. And so I feel like that's the stable um, point there just after we pass the magnet. And so that's kind of what I'm considering the baseline for that. So the yellow is the sunny sky. That's the uh, definitely the strongest uh, feeling uh, motor of the bunch. The Brother Hobby is an orange and it's almost the same. Um, the next biggest one is actually the Rotor X, which is a lot smoother than the other two. You can see that those peaks are a lot closer together there. And the lowest measure torque uh, is that Emax. Uh, the Sunny Sky uh, rates at about 0.67 Newton centimeters of torque, um, peak to peak. Uh, the Brother Hobby, uh, about 0.64 Newton centimeters. Uh, the Rotor X was giving us 0.2 Newton centimeters and the Emax 0.14 Newton centimeters. So the difference between the smooth running and the uh, notchy feeling motors is quite big. It's almost a four times difference in motor torque. And you'd think that this would create a lot of noise and that would be a, a really bad thing. But to give this a little more context, I can scale this chart down to show you how, the, how big these torque values are compared to the total torque output of the motor. The, uh, the Sunny Sky in this case, um, I was testing up to about uh, three Newton centimeters of torque. So while the, that is a, uh, you know, kind of a, a large value of it, um, up and down to there, if you consider from here to up about here, it's actually not super, super massive. And as you start running the motor up at a higher value, it's a smaller and smaller percentage of the total torque output of the motor. And uh, the smoother motors, the uh, Emax and the Rotor X, you can see that the uh, that Emax test is almost nothing already even at that scale. And so the uh, additional ripple on top of, uh, you know, two and a half, I believe that one was about two and a half Newton meters um, at the maximum uh, load that I tested it at. Uh, it's even smaller. But I don't feel like this is the whole story here either, because certainly uh, it's a lot stiffer. Uh, it's stiff when you try and move it very slowly, but I found that even trying to click the motor over uh, just slightly faster gave kind of really different looking results. So I did the same test, um, but instead of gently pushing uh, through each click, I just gave it a flick with my finger and let the rotor spin uh, so it wasn't spinning super fast, but it was spinning and clicking over on its own at a, a much faster speed um, than running each click by hand. And that gives us 
these sort of results. Now I can bring the scale back up to uh, see the whole thing. And you can definitely see the, a lot of higher uh, frequency components, uh, you know, it's spinning much faster. And it is good to keep in mind that this is spinning the whole, the dyno and the spindle and the motor coupling. And so not all of this torque is coming just from cogging torque. There are other uh, noise elements that are, are coming through. Um, but we have an idea of how big that base cogging torque is already and so we should certainly at least see that much from it and what we see instead is we've got you know a bunch of like the uh, sunny sky is in this uh, kind of pink color so this is the strongest cogging torque of the lot and if our zero torque value is here in the middle it tested at 0.67 which is actually like right about here right where these big peaks are is where uh, the peak cogging torque that we measured was doing it slow. But there are all these sections down here where we're getting very, very minimal um, peaks out of it. And all of those sections, they don't feel drastically different. Like we have these little particularly noisy sections there. And if I can turn that off, we can kind of see the ones behind it. But like the Brother Hobby was in green and the Rotor X was a, a really good one in uh, black right on top of it and you see that the differences between these they feel broadly similar through there although our, our peaks are, are you know a little less on that the black rotor x that was only 0.2 and the brother hobby which was 0.64 you know this doesn't feel like a three times difference uh, looking at those traces. And we shouldn't be spinning fast enough that we're totally lost in the analog low pass filter uh, that's on the front end of this load cell amplifier. So if this is reducing kind of what looks like the intensity of this clicking that we feel, you know, going really slow certainly seems to give us a stronger click uh, than when we're spinning it up fast. Uh, we can take a look at uh, some examples, spinning it, the motor up at full speed. So this is the torque output of a full throttled run uh, from the Emax uh, 1106 motor in blue and the Sunny Sky in red. So the ultimate torque values uh, are end up being different, but what we're really interested here is the noise. And honestly, they don't look significantly different. Remember, the cogging torque of this Emax is like four times less than the sunny sky and at very very low rpm so this is the 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 jerk when the uh, motor is initially uh, starting up and then idling up at very low rpm the uh, sunny sky definitely has a peak in, in uh, noise intensity there but as it settles into its its idle rpm like if i toggle off this emacs here the sunny sky if anything the sunny sky is giving us less intensity um, of noise, even though the Emax is one quarter the uh, cogging strength. And we can zoom into these charts and see now down at that uh, same beginning, you know, low uh, RPM just starting up and the intensity of the noise that we're getting off the, um, the load. And these are almost the same all through here. And as we ramp up in acceleration, so this is the RPM increasing up to full RPM, and we get up to the, that point. And while the sunny sky has these little fits of increased noise, uh, really the bulk of it outside of those little things, you'd have to say that these look broadly similar. And uh, right about here where the torque is falling off, we're now approaching peak RPM. So this is going to be, uh, you know, the 40 or 50,000 RPM, whatever, um, we're actually getting full unloaded. And the same thing where, you know, in, if anything, the uh, Emax has some areas where we're getting slightly higher intensity uh, vibration off that load cell. And then the motor loads down. And we have that same effect where they're very much the same all the way through. Now, with those high RPM sections, we definitely wouldn't expect to see a lot of the um, that vibration coming through because we're pulling like five or 600 revolutions per second. And it's like a 12 pole motor. So we have quite a few uh, phase transitions happening there. And so that's going to be caught by uh, the, the low pass filter. But I can bring up the residual results um, because I've got a strong digital low pass filter on those results. And so what we're looking at here is just the noise that was pulled out of those. And we don't really see anything different there. So this is everything above about 100 hertz 
on that uh, torque track and uh, the Emacs in blue, the sunny sky in red, and the same kind of idea, very, very low RPM. We're getting slightly higher intensity of the noise coming off it, but through all of this section in the middle where we're ramped up to full speed uh, and uh, ramping down from full speed under load, uh, they're pretty much the same and if anything again the emacs has just a little a couple sections there uh, of slightly higher uh, intensity vibrational noise as it's on full speed and because they're different setups that could very easily be from the motor coupling or the uh, the arrangement of, of the motor um, but certainly not what we would uh, expect with you know four times stronger cogging torque from that sunny sky so there you have it. Not exactly an exhaustive look at it, but enough to say that I think that we really don't have anything to worry about. Even on these really tiny motors with fairly strong cogging torque, there doesn't appear to be like a massively significantly stronger amount of noise coming off of it once you're up to any sort of RPM. And even with the relatively low torque output of these tiny motors, the cogging torque of a stiff motor is still you know, only a fair, a relatively small portion of the total torque uh, that you're going to get out of the motor in the first place. So once you start going up to 1407s and 2205s and 6s and larger, uh, even a really stiff motor, the amount of cogging torque uh, that you get at a standstill like that is going to be just a slim, slim portion of the actual working torque that you're going to get out of the motor. So while a torque ripple is always there and doesn't actually go away, it doesn't really seem like a big deal to me in our application at least. So it made for an interesting exploration, but I don't see myself measuring the uh, cogging torque of every single motor that's going to go into the motor tests.